Today, I'm gonna compare these two paintings I did of the same subject a couple years apart. So I'm gonna go through some lessons that I learned along the way and hopefully save you some time in your watercolor learning. So let's take a look. In painting, it's easy to get frustrated if we don't take a step back and look at the progress that we've made along the way. So that's what today's video is about. I'm going to compare two paintings of the same subject that I did about two years apart from each other. And I'm going to talk about the lessons that I learned in between these two paintings, and you'll be able to see them in this example. At a glance, there are things that I like about both of these renderings of this scene. Obviously, in this newer version, I included a lot more of the scene. I knew that I really wanted the contrast of these workers against the dark background to be a key element in the scene. You get some of this contrast here, but if you squint, you see some middle and light values against some middle and light values. Now there are some darks included as well, but I think understanding more of what my goal was in this newer painting was helpful because I, it allowed me to understand that I really wanted that contrast to be strong. And the story really becomes more about these two construction workers. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and give you some general observations, things I like in the newer painting that I wasn't doing in the older painting. First of all, I think there's some clarity going on here with this background building. In this older version, I just kind of kept it all the same value and just left it at that. And there's a nice kind of loose sketchy quality to this, but I do like that here I was able to define the background a little bit more. I gave it the right amount of interest and the right amount of detail that was needed. I like that I included this power pole here. I think it connects the middle ground of this scene with the background. It gives this area some interest. And I think that's something that's lacking over here in the older version of the painting. We have some interest here, and then the, this background just kind of fades to softness, but there's nothing really to hold our attention in this top third of the painting. I think including a vertical right here, this power pole, and some lines leading into the scene, some of these power lines that ended up being directional lines to lead us into the scene would have really improved that area of the painting. Uh, the next thing is this painting isn't really about the sky, but I like how I handled the sky here and I felt like it gave it enough attention. And here I could have used just a little bit more attention to the sky with leaving some of these white clouds. I get more of a sense of light, a little more sense of midday um, brightness with that. I think that combined with the, the strong contrast in the scene is really a nice touch. So in the older painting, I think I could have done a little bit more with the sky there. One thing that I like that I did in this newer painting was I have a variety of edges and what I like to call contrast of edges. I have some really sharp edges over some soft edges and those create really beautiful areas of interest in our paintings. And so here I do have some harder edge, uh, harder edges versus softer edges. But in this newer painting, it was a little more intentional. I have some harder edge trees here and the softest edges are just a little hint of a background here. And I think that that works a little bit better. This really tall tree with a soft edge um, doesn't quite work right. It might have worked a little bit better if again, like I mentioned, I had a nice vertical sharper line over that to contrast um, with a softer edge and give us more of a sense of distance. So having a good variety of edges in your painting are key. So some hard edges with these buildings, some soft edges in the sky, hard edges with trees against soft edges. I think that's important in our watercolors. Okay, something that happened here in this older painting that I don't really like is this is what I call a tangent, where the edge of this awning stops right where this lamp starts. And so when those edges line up like that, and that's something that we actually do see in reality, but it doesn't look good in a painting. I think of those as tangents. It's too convenient that the edge of this awning 
leads right to where this lamp starts. The pole of this lamp is landing almost exactly where the pole of this awning is. And so if I was going to paint this over again, I would probably move that lamp over to here, kind of like I did in this newer version of the painting, just so it's not starting right at the edge of that awning. So be mindful of that in your painting and try to avoid tangents. Overall, I'm fairly happy with both of these paintings, but I like seeing the bits of progress that I made between this early painting, probably about two years ago, and my newer version of this scene. I can see where I became a lot more clear on details that needed to be included and details to eliminate. I think that's a skill that comes with time, and I'm pleased to see that this newer painting, I'm able to accomplish some of those things. Watercolor is not a very forgiving medium. It's hard to correct. Having a plan as we go into our painting is crucial. So that's why I made this free video lesson, Seven Secrets to Fresh, Powerful Paintings. Many students have already watched this video lesson and are seeing great results, and I know that it can help you out as well. So take a look at this free lesson. All you have to do is follow the link down below in the description and learn how to paint more fresh and powerful watercolor paintings. It's very easy to get frustrated with the particular results of a painting. It's so tempting and easy to forget the progress that we've made along the way. That's why it's so important to hang on to some of your older paintings, take some time to reflect as you move forward in your watercolor learning. Celebrating these wins, these successes, this growth along the way is really important. What are some ways that you reflect on the progress that you are making as an artist? I'd love to hear from you. Leave that in a comment below. So thank you for spending some time with me here today. I know there are a lot of places where you can learn about watercolor and I appreciate you spending your time with me here today. So keep moving forward in your learning, keep working at it, keep practicing, and I'll see you next time.